If you've watched our other videos about machine reading question answering, whether it's Manchester or Cranfield paradigm questions, all of the examples thus far have been a one and done affair. Do a search, get some text, extract the answer from that. But that isn't always realistic. As anyone who has gone down a Wikipedia hole knows, sometimes you need several pieces of information to fully answer a question. The human state of the art for answering these sorts of questions would be a research librarian. They're the best searchers when you have a really tricky question you have to answer one way or another. Friend of the University of Maryland's library school, Google's Dan Russell, has written a book called The Joy of Search that showcases the process for figuring out tricky questions. He goes through individual questions on his blog, which I encourage you to read. There's a link to the process here. I don't want to go through the whole solution, that's Dan's thing, and you should check out his blog post, but I do want to focus on why answering, why is the Karkinez Strait so underdeveloped, fiendishly difficult. First, the question is a counterfactual about something, development, that didn't happen. So to answer the question, you first need to find out the old name for this property, outlined in red here, who owned it in the 19th century, see whom they sold it to in the 20th century, and cross-reference that to zoning decisions that got made at the appropriate county level. This is not something that computers can currently do. What I do want to talk about is how we can inch closer to that goal. The name for when computers do this kind of question answering is called multi-hop question answering. These questions are designed to take multiple steps, or hops, to get to the right answer. The most prominent data set for multi-hop questions is Hot Pot QA, which, while not as challenging as a question about Bay Area land use, do require multiple steps to find the answer. In particular, in theory, you need to hop from one Wikipedia page to another to find the answer. In this example, to find the city Facebook launched in, to hop to the page on Harvard to find out that Harvard is located outside Boston and Cambridge. The way Hot Pot QA was authored was that the author showed two linked Wikipedia pages and asked crowd workers to write a question that required information from both pages to create a sensible answer. There's both an information retrieval problem as well as a machine reading problem here. Hot Pot QA has two evaluation settings. A full wiki setting where you have to find the evidence yourself out of all of Wikipedia, and a distractor setting where you're given some evidence and you have to figure out how to extract the correct hop out of that limited finite set. Now, multi-hop is not unique to this data set. There are multi-hop questions in, for example, my favorite question answering format, QuizBull. But the great thing about QuizBull is that if you don't solve the early multi-hop clues, you can still get the question at the end of the sentence with clues that don't require multi-hop reasoning. This makes it, despite its inherent complexity a more accessible format for long-term question answering research. Again, in my biased opinion. So let's work through trying to solve some of the multi-hop examples from the QuizBowl dataset using Wikipedia paragraphs as our source documents. And hopefully this will show you how hard the problem can be. Okay, the first question is, in a play from this country, the audience is given the option to blow up four policemen by the maniac. Okay, so we need to find the search result, which is from the page about the play The Accidental Death of an Anarchist. But we don't know who wrote it, so we can't answer the question. So let's find out more about this play by going to the top of the same Wikipedia page. Aha! It's by Dario Fo. And what do you know? It tells us right here that he's Italian. Oh, but what if we're looking for an exact match answer and our answer key is Italy? If you're using an evaluation metric like exact match, that means we have to keep going. So let's find out more about Dario Fo. You have to go three paragraphs deep in his biography 
his own Wikipedia page to find the string Italy. We'll talk more about different ways to solve this problem when we talk about generation. But let's take a look at how QuizBull self-annotates these multi-hop links. The same links that we followed in looking up information about the accidental death of an anarchist to figure out that it was written by Dario Fo to figure out he's Italian are right here at the end of the question. And if you can't do that, you can just look up the nationality of this guy named Luigi. Let's move on to another question, this time about this painting. The question is, a Lorenzo Lotto painting of this woman includes a cartouche showing her response to an accusation. Okay, so let's see what we get out of a search of Wikipedia. The first step is to figure out which of these possible next hops is correct. In the first evidence, you need to know that a signature and a date can't be a response to an accusation, so that's out. Then you need to know that a cartouche on his beret is inconsistent with the question's use of this woman. So that just leaves the last piece of evidence here, where you have a woman and dialogue in a cartouche, uh, which matches uh, the original question. This is why the distractor setting in Hot Pot QA can be so tricky. A search result can turn up a bunch of seemingly relevant material, but you need to pick the right answer out of all of these choices somehow. What makes the distractor setting of Hot Pot QA more tractable than QuizBowl, however, is that the answer is in there somewhere, which is not guaranteed in QuizBowl. Moreover, in QuizBowl, the correct pieces of evidence are not annotated. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. Okay, now the challenge is to figure out who this her is in this piece of evidence. So if you go to the start of this article, you can see that this is Susanna from the book of Daniel. So often, this multi-hop reasoning is essentially co-reference resolution either within a document or across documents. So how can co-reference be across documents, I hear you ask? That's not how pronouns work. To show you what I mean, let's take a look at a quizable example that does require knowing who entities are across documents. A mechanic was arrested in one of these two countries for using underwear soaked in invisible ink to pass secrets to the other. Note the Manchester paradigm highlighting of how many countries you need to answer this question. To answer this question, we need to figure out what these two countries are, so let's do a query. And we get this pretty unambiguous result, but we don't know the answer, which needs to be two countries. What's this Mossad thing? And is Cairo a country? If it isn't, we need to figure out what country it's in. So perhaps you as a human know the answer, but a computer needs to keep hopping. So let's get a couple more pieces of evidence to figure out what countries are being referenced here. Then we find out that Cairo is the capital of Egypt and that Mossad is the CIA, MI6, and Dave, what have you, uh, equivalent for Israel. So we have our answer, Egypt and Israel. Let's take a look again at the answers and the giveaway for this quizable question. You see that there are lots of acceptable answers here because Egypt was known as the United Arab Republic at the time, and it also gives the names of Egypt and Israel in the native language of those countries. But in addition to this very fulsome answer line, you also have a direct way to get to the answer by looking up the Camp David Accords. And if you pull that up on Wikipedia, you get a lot of ways to find Egypt and Israel. Let's address the paradigms of question answering a little bit more directly. If you haven't seen that video that defines Manchester as knowledge probing questions and Cranfield as knowledge seeking questions, check it out. Otherwise, what follows won't make a lot of sense. But let's dig into these two approaches for question answering a little bit more. Multi-hop question answering is an example of where the Cranfield question answering paradigm has failed us. Existing systems inability to answer these questions effectively have trained human users not to ask them. 
I recently had this experience. I was watching The Mandalorian, and in the episode called The Sheriff, this guy showed up. He looks familiar. I remembered him from some Netflix show, but I couldn't think of his name or the name of the show. But did I ask Google to tell me Netflix show with guy who played Sheriff on The Mandalorian? No, of course not, because I know that Google is not going to answer that sort of question. Decades of using search engines like Google have trained me to decompose my information need into atomic queries. So I first figure out the name of the sheriff. Aha! Cobb Vanth. Then I see who played him. Timothy Oliphant. Then I ask for the Netflix show starring Timothy Oliphant. Aha! The Santa Clarita Diet. That's what it was. Don't judge me. And that's the problem with the Cranfield paradigm. Because a savvy user knows they cannot ask these multi-hop questions, you won't find as many of these types of questions in, say, natural questions. So why don't people just use Manchester questions like Quiz Bowl that have plenty of these multi-hop questions, you ask? And I ask that too. The problem is that for Quiz Bowl questions, you don't have the gold annotations of where to find the gold evidence. And that's a big benefit of Hot Pot QA. It explicitly gives gold annotations for where to find the hops and the answers. But it also sits in the liminal space between Manchester and Cranfield. The questions are synthetic, not representing real needs. But neither do they follow the best practices of the Manchester paradigm to test the ability of humans to do multi-hop question answering. For human question answering competitions, there are clear rules about how to write good multi-hop questions. You typically don't go down the information gradient. In other words, you don't hop from more well-known entities to lesser-known entities. From what I've seen in, say, natural questions, this seems to be the case in Cranfield questions, since questions are likely going to be about the things that are less well-known. This was the case in my Mandalorian example, going from Cobb Vanth to Timothy Oliphant to Santa Clarita Diet. This is often violated in Hot Pot QA, which offends my sense of question aesthetics, but does it make any difference in training systems? Who knows? Likewise, when you use multi-hop strategies and pyramidal questions, you should resolve the multi-hop through the judicious use of co-reference. We outlined this process in a 2015 paper that explicitly linked mentions to the underlying entities, but not, alas, to the gold evidence. And the community, it seems, really wants that gold evidence, not the co-reference resolutions. That and less complicated questions. There are other question answering data sets out there, and we'll talk about them eventually, but I wanted to start with these machine reading data sets because it shows both the promise of these approaches, they can answer tons of questions right out of the box just by looking at raw text. But it also shows the chasm between human and machine abilities. There's no way a computer can come anywhere close to semi-skilled humans' ability to answer the joy of search style questions that we started this video talking about. So even as we learn about the methods that can provide the answers to these questions, think about what's preventing computers from identifying when an answer satisfies the question. Thinking up really novel approaches to reformulate a question, rather than brute forcing all possible combinations, and ruling out plausible but wrong answers. These are all things that humans do with ease, but still stymie computers. So here's hoping that hopping gets more human. This is just a single lecture from a course. YouTube likes to show you these videos out of order, but if you go to the course webpage linked below, you can see the lectures in the right order and you can get resources like homeworks or suggested reading. You can also visit quanta.org if you want to learn about our systems for creating computers that can answer questions, where quanta stands for question answering is not a trivial activity.
If you want to help the channel, provide a big gradient to the algorithm by liking and subscribing.